a great storm arose, but the disciples cried for Jesus, who was asleep in the boat. Then he stepped out and he spoke the word, and they all were amazed to see this man with one command, the wind and seas obey. That's my Jesus. When the heat comes on the sea, things change. Storms are still and lives are healed in his name. Just say amen to that if you believe it. Amen. Well, I was lost in sin's darkness, trying to make my own way. You see what started out this freedom led me to a life in chains. But then I cried, I cried out to Jesus, and he heard my plea. Then he stepped in and said, then, oh, I'm really free. When he comes on the sea, things change. Storms are still and lives are filled in his name. Does tremble, Satan knows he must flee when we call on our Savior, he comes on the sea. Oh, all of hell, it does tremble, Satan knows he. Let's give the Lord some praise. Here we go. Oh, I'm reading the end of Paul and Silas. 
last time they found myself in chains Yeah, but they were set free right when they began to praise He said, if you don't praise me, the most stones will cry out So don't let a rock do your job, get on your feet and shout Come on, come on, get ready, let's have some church Come on, come on, get ready, let's watch God burn Don't sit there where you are with they like a Bible, it said summer revival, oh, but there's a million dead churches just filling up an acre of land, and what we need is a soul, a feeling station, hey, a full service open the 24 hours a day, just a pump on that high octane Super salvation, my Lord. We're all hired out of gas and to the point that fast get away. Oh, how many knows that the church has been playing patty cake a little too long and trying to make everybody happy? We need to fill them up with Jesus and save the souls of the lost. Amen. I like this verse. Listen up now. You can have the greatest choir, dress them all in long white robe attire. It's like y'all done that before. <laughs> Maybe if I was like, and everybody thinks of Weston so great, they said? Okay. Didn't work. <laughs> Never mind. I got to get something they agree on. Oh, man. We are so honored, privileged to be here with you over here in Scottsville, Kentucky. Man, we drove a long way today, all the way from Hendersonville, Tennessee, <laughs> to be here with you tonight. And we are actually very, very, I gotta find that other earpiece. I lost it. It's done ran off. It's way back here. Hang on. Hallelujah. I'm gonna tuck it right in here to this collar. Now I won't lose it, but it'll be all nasty here in a minute. Anyway, we came all the way from Hendersonville, Tennessee this afternoon, 
and uh, we're just going to share our heart with you tonight, if you'll allow us to, and we're just going to have a good time. Are y'all ready to have a good time in church here tonight? We have been a whole lot of places uh, of the people who have just acted like, well, y'all can't have a good time in church, you need to be reverent. I said, well, this is me being reserved, you know that, right? <laughs> I get a little crazier than this, but some people get a little scared and run off. But I'm excited for what Jesus has done in my life. How about you? Anybody here excited for what God has done for you? And so we just going to tell it like it is, and we're going to sing it like a heart says to sing it. And if, if y'all be okay with that, we'll just have church tonight like that song says. And I want to introduce the family to you tonight and uh, just kind of go from here on out like we're just kind of partaking, we're at a family gathering, a little reunion here, we just go act like we know one another just good, if you, you know, if you want to shout amen, if you want to shout hallelujah, whatever you do, you won't scare none of us, but this young lady coming up right next to me, she is, uh, without doubt, the finest thing that has happened to me, aside of salvation, this woman right here is the best thing that's ever happened to me, amen. she's my best friend, and she ain't going to be shy about telling me about it either, but she's my best friend in the whole world, and uh, I think it ought to be that way. You ought to marry your best friend, sure. fellas and ladies. Uh, but uh, it, there's nobody I'd rather travel this, this country and this world with than this one right here. She's our soprano. She's our songwriter, and uh, that's my wife. Would you make Christy Henson welcome? You're glad to see her. Oh, she looks good. I'm proud of that. That's my wife right there. Uh, on down the line a little way, she is uh, 22 years old, and uh, she's been singing uh, for six and a half years, just about, with the Henson family full-time. She started, uh, got the, the bug in her a little bit, bug bit her when she's about a little over 15, a little past 15. She started traveling with us. She said, we went on like a three-month trip or something like that, maybe one month, I don't remember what it was, and she went out with us for one summer, and she said, oh, Lord. I'm tired. I said, you're 15. I think it was a one-month trip, and I said, the bugs bit me, but I need about a three-month break, and then I'll be back. She did. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, she, she couldn't get away from it, and uh, she's loved it ever since. She's our alto. She's a songwriter. She's our daughter, Mama's Baby Girl. Would you make Jordy welcome here tonight? You're glad to see Miss Jordy. <laughs> On down the line is the newcomer. He's uh, singing way down there in the bass tonight, and a little bit of the lead part, and he hails from Evansville, Indiana, and uh, he uh, occasionally crosses the line over here in Kentucky a few times, uh, but he's a good friend of ours, and he said, man, I'm off this weekend, and uh, me and my wife are going to come down to Bowling Green area anyway, y'all uh, right. care if I join you? I said, no, come on, man, we right. have a good time whenever he's around, but even better time when his wife's around, because she keeps him in line. <laughs> And uh, that's Mr. Phil Culbertson. Make him welcome. And his wife, Susan, right over here. Fourth row back. Wave at us, Susan. That's her. And so my name is Weston Henson. We are, uh, like I said, we've been, uh, we've been looking forward to this. Uh, Brother James called and set this up. James, wave at us. Yeah, he's a man to talk to. If you don't have a good time tonight and you don't want us to come back, you tell him and Pastor that right there. Uh, what's that? Miss yeah, don't blame Miss Edda. She's an innocent bystander to all this. But they got together and conspired and said, let's bring it back to Scottsville. Are y'all glad we're here tonight? Because we sure are. Let's let Jesus know we're glad he's here. Amen? Yeah. Now, I may be a little directionally challenged, but uh, I, I think I'm still in the South. Is that true? We're a little bit below that Mason-Dixon line. And here in the South, y'all like country? Yeah. Country style of music. Y'all like that style? Y'all don't have you don't have to be shy about it because I'm not going to go off on a country song. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are like, oh, the pastor's over there. We can't sing. <laughs> uh, but what I'm really hinting at is I'm going to sing country gospel. Y'all like that style here in Kentucky? Oh, I'm going to tell you one thing. This is a Kentucky boy that wrote this song uh, from Beaver Dam, Kentucky, Mr. Gerald Crabb. Anybody know Gerald Crabb in the house tonight? Yeah. Uh, I went to him and said, Gerald, we're going to come out with a new album, and uh, I'm going to need a song. I can let my inner George Jones out on, but it's got to be gospel. He said, oh, man, I, can, I think I can take care of you there. So he came back in a few weeks and uh, had some health issues. He probably would have had it to me in about a week or so, but then he had a heart attack. I mean, I said, Gerald, look, if you didn't want to write this song. Uh, but he, no, he, he got better, God touched him, 
he wrote this song, sent it to me in a text, and he just kind of played with the guitar and, and singing it. And uh, as soon as I heard it, I said, I know I can do something with that. And see, uh, I, I was raised back when country was country. And you see, you had George Jones and Merle Haggard doing the circuits of country music, singing what they call country. Because the message, they, they try to label country today, that ain't country. I'm going to tell you right now, that's just not country. But see, there's one fundamental problem with country music. And that is that in country music, Pastor, you can start at the very beginning of the song, and man, you've got it all together. I mean, the first words of the song, man, I had all this stuff. I had this nice truck and had this nice mower and tractor and all this other stuff. And by the end of that verse or shortly thereafter, you done lost all of it. And then your wife has left you and your dog bites you on the leg and runs off with your wife. And you've lost everything by the end of the song. But see, country gospel is so much better and so much more positive a message and such a better uh, understanding of the truth of this world. And it's that you can't make it through life, whether you've got something or whether you ain't got something, you can only make it through this life with Jesus. Yeah. Because you can lose it all, as Uncle Ronnie wrote the song, lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. But as long as I've got Jesus, I've got it all. And this song right here is the country. You can smell uh, cornbread on it. And it's called The Light Just Came On. And it goes like this. No one gave me hope for my future. I fell down more often than stood. I had nothing to count on that was sure. And not one thing within me was good. At the end of Law Street, all along, oh, like a beacon in the night that came seeking in the midst of my darkness, the light just came on. How many of that light is on in your life here tonight? There is hope now. In a life that was messy And there's love like I've never known See, I found joy in this new world that I live in Guess what else tonight? And Jesus is my light that came on Oh, living at the end of Law Street all along. Oh, like a beacon in the night that came seeking in the midst of my darkness, the light just came on. that style of singing. Uh, honey, I want you to come share a tune with us. Will you do that? <clears throat> I like that I want to know song. I know you hate singing that song because you got to sing from your toenails. But <laughs> a hard one, but I wrote it, so I've only got myself to blame. I was hoping somebody else would sing it. <laughs> but this song, um, I wrote this because we, this is what we do and we do it all the time, and we travel many, many miles to do it. And um, there was one night that a young man, I could tell that he was just really struggling and wanting to come to the altar, but he didn't come to the altar. And he left there that night, and it broke my heart. And uh, we were going down the road, and it was a long road home, and 
Weston turned to me and he saw me crying. He said, what's wrong, baby? And I said, they don't understand how much we love them. They don't even understand how much God loves them. Right. And he said, you're such a sensitive person. <laughs> he, he, he said, that's why I love you. But right after that, God gave me this song. And I think that if anybody here and you're in ministry, you know that's what it's all about. If you're a Christian, you know what it's all about. It's just wanting to know that we'll all be one big happy family over there. I just want to know. Listen. song something. I love that song. Um, and that beautiful voice for a while was uh, is challenged by the enemy. And why don't you come share a little bit of that testimony? You know, uh, anybody else in here hate cancer? Yep. Yeah. We've been through a lot since we've been here. And uh, I was sick for a couple of years before we found out. We got that call that said, Christy, you have cancer. And um we didn't know why, but they said it's thyroid cancer, which was a good thing because most of the time that's a very curable cancer, and it was all contained within my thyroid, they believed, and so they had to remove 
the, my, my whole thyroid. They said, we do have to warn you that you could lose your singing voice. It's a risky surgery and that's just what happens. And I said, okay. And we go through the surgery and we get through it. And sure enough, there went my voice. And six months later, still didn't have a voice. And the doctor said, what you've got now, that's what you're gonna have, I'm sorry. You have to make it work. Well, I had changed into me barely even singing. Jordy took my part, which they helped Jordy because she can sing now. <laughs> she stretched that range. And um, about three months later after that, we were in Indiana and um, we were having a service. And I had told Weston, please take my songs off the set because it's embarrassing to try to sing and it just didn't sound great. But one night he turned to me and he said, God's telling me to tell you to sing a song. And I looked at him, and usually I would say, uh-uh, <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not going to question that. And I heard God tell me, when are you going to trust me enough? Amen. Are you going to take that step of faith? Amen. And that night I started singing, and it was the first time in really over a year we had heard my voice be back to normal somewhat. So that's God. Yeah. Doctors can say what Amen. they want to, but our God says other things. Yeah. Cancer's a trick tricky little thing so the next this last year we got the call that they thought it was back but they could treat it and it was a good treatment and probably would seal the deal I never had the treatment and they said well if you'll just have a little radioactive iodine it could affect your voice but you probably need it and I said well my God gave me my voice back before he'll do it again Amen. and here I am I'm standing here cancer free and singing for the Lord Because you may be in the middle of that storm. I was there. Because I didn't always just say, oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. There was a time I went, oh, Lord, how am I going to get through this? There was a time I said, Lord, what if I'm not going to be here to see my first grandbaby? Bless the Lord. What if I'm not here for my daughters? And when you're in that dark place, it's a hard place to go through. But just hold to him. Just let him hold you. Because it gets you through the worst times in your life. He got me through it. And I have a little grandbaby that I got to see. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Whatever you're going through today, we didn't come here just to do a concert. We came here to uplift you and let you know God will get you through what you're going through. It's on the other side of this. Listen to this song. Satan's tried to kill me. He's tried to bring me down. There have been times I was so tired. Almost stayed there on the ground And up ahead is a valley I don't want to walk through And Lord, you know I wouldn't try If I did not have you Cause on the other side of this There's a mountain I can stand on On the other side of this there's a promise I can count on Of peace and joy and love With mercy's gifts And I'll find myself On the other side of this Oh, now I have known some people who've had such grief and pain They lost themselves in darkness and never searched for light again Oh, but I know you're the answer Through my test I'll testify I'll walk through hell if I have to As long as you're by my side Cause on the other side 